more Ross Straws teach me how to draw in just five minutes? Will today be a color dodge day? Will I ever think of a serious third question? Grab your brush and let's go. So yes, it's me. Welcome to episode 15 of Pudding. Popular art YouTubers in the title for views. And well, 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 look who's in the related channel section of my channel now. Today's victim is none other than the king of color dodge himself, Ross Draws. Today's video is sponsored by uh... So anyway, if by chance you don't know who Ross is, his name is Ross Tran. He's an artist and a small YouTuber like myself, and he makes entertaining art videos with his dog. I first came across his channel in 2016 when I watched his Ross Draws Moana! And needless to say, okay, <laughs> let's just give this a go. I was confused. However, he is very good at what he does. I flipped through his portfolio and immediately began to pray that I would one day be able to master the ways of color dodge like he does. And as I prayed, I heard a still small voice say, You should probably practice. And I was like, <laughs> No. But the still small voice persisted, and thus here we are. So Ross has more than one tutorial. The one we'll be watching today is called Stylized Portrait Tutorial! Sideways Smiley Face. From his comment section, in the immortal words of Darren Des, it seems so easy AF. Is it? Let's find out. Stylized portrait tutorial. Ooh. Yeah, so this is the vibe I'm going for. You know, this is a simple sketch that I had prepared for this episode. Oh, okay. So, I guess we should just already know how to do that. Hmm. Cutting out crucial steps of an art process and an art tutorial video. Now, where have I seen that before? But that's fine. Let me just. This is adequate. Also, I have these colors picked out for me. And what I like to do with these stylized portraits is have a nice combination of warm colors and cool colors. Same. I won't lie. This is definitely me when I'm drawing. One brush blending mode I really like to use is just a soft round, but turn down the hardness just a little bit so it has more of a fade like that. This is actually a really cool brush. I usually just use the default hard and default soft brushes, but this modification gives it a cool feel. Sometimes I use an airbrush just to quickly do this cool. Okay, I'm less than two minutes in, and he's already here. It immediately builds form and is moving forward. What was that? It immediately builds form. Finally, an art principle. So I too will build up form with this large airbrush. Also, the reason why it's so clean is that I have clipping mask, and this is what it looks like. <laughs> Ooh. Jesus Christ. Right click, create clipping mask. And wow, it's like uh, using some shampoo and conditioner on your hair. <laughs> clipping masks are honestly a lifesaver. I didn't begin weaving them into my process until about two years ago when, when I discovered that they existed in the first place. They just keep everything neat and you can have these very sharp and clean outlines in your illustration. So I definitely suggest looking into using those. As you can see, here's the progress right now. I really broke everything down into two tones. That's really all you need. Aha, another fundamental. I actually read this on another artist's blog, Ethan Becker, 
and I will put links to his stuff in the description. It is amazing. And basically he said, you should be able to show form by having only a light source and a shadow on a flat color. And really, you should just be able to build up any kind of form you need from there. And just ever since I read that, I've been trying to achieve that same effect. And so I've just been simplifying everything as much as possible. And it really has done a lot of good for my work. And now I'm gonna try some of the dark accents, which I really love. Dark accents make everything so much better. So I'm just adding them to the respective places. I used to be very scared of using dark accents. I thought, well, it's not pretty. But the thing is, if you use them correctly, it just adds a level of depth, which is actually missing from a lot of people's work. So don't be afraid to go darker, especially in digital art. You can always make it lighter if it doesn't work. Now, as far as traditional art, <laughs> I don't know, like, go watch Casey Golden or something, lol. No, that's, that's a joke. I actually do a lot of traditional art in my spare time. And honestly, it's a lot harder to control the values, but the principles still apply. And I have learned a lot from Casey Golden. I just want to throw that out there. Her videos are great. And I'm going to uh, put in some of the light. I love adding this part. I tried to light, not the highlights, but the light. I mean, we're barely two minutes into the tutorial and his already looks like done. Of course, he is speeding his video up quite a bit and there are many jump cuts, but it just looks so effortless. We're going, we're looking at hours and hours of work in about five minutes. So it is a bit disheartening, but nevertheless, I persist. When I try to turn the form, I take the background color and apply it on the side of the cheeks. So it has that nice three-dimensional global pop. This is actually a very interesting idea. Now that I think about it, I have seen it done in a lot of professional artwork, but I never considered doing it in a portrait. It definitely does help to add more form. Actually, you know what could be really cool? If maybe we add like a like a dragon. Something that matches the character essence. Maybe a tail here. Ooh, that's cool. I really like that. Honestly, he just threw that dragon in there and flat shaded it and then added a small amount of brushwork, so I feel better about half doing this snake. It's a pretty derpy looking snake. It's cute though. Make sure that each element has character, and each character is going to mesh within each other to make the whole painting. You can see like the essence of the hair is one thing, the skin feels like its own character, and we have the dragon. So one thing I'm consciously doing is trying to match the shape essence of the hair to the dragon. Yeah, I basically did that with the snake, derpy looking snake. I kind of wanted to make this a Medusa dreadlocks kind of illustration. But I also didn't want to have to draw a bunch of individual snakes, so here we are. And I feel like this is the type of girl who would have a tattoo. Not in my Christian household! And now let's do some of the highlights. Nice, look at that. That's why I like to save the highlights for later. Before and after. That is an insane amount of highlights. That is just... <sighs> but it does look visually appealing, so it's fine. How am I gonna do a painting without color dodge? So, let's do some color dodge. You guys ready for this? Yes! <laughs> we all knew this day was coming. <clears throat> color dodge. I beseech thy power. Bestow upon me. No, I'm just kidding. It, it's it's not that big of a deal. I just kind of threw some color dodge on there, and yeah, it does make it look a lot prettier. When we paint with layers, sometimes we're a little mechanic, and we need just a boost of painterly strokes just to make sure we have everything from left. This is a good tactic. This is something I could stand to do a lot in my own work. 
a lot of times it does have a very artificial feel to it just because of my reliance on Photoshop to keep everything neat and clean. Of course, we need to make fun of it. So we're gonna draw glasses. Okay, those are terrible glasses. I'm gonna try that again. Yeah, I'm not about to hurt my own feelings like that. Yes, so I really like how mine came out, but tell me what you think about it. First of all, the actual drawing portion of Ross's tutorial video was just five minutes long. If you have seen my other I tried following a tutorial video, then you already know that these art tutorial videos have a habit of being a bit sparse on the actual, uh, tutorial. <coughs> Especially if the person who made it has a Patreon where they sell actual tutorials. But nonetheless, I am extremely grateful to Ross for sharing his information with us. I actually did learn a lot about how to use the soft brush and how to build up form with the soft brush, which is something that results in really pretty portraits and it gives them more life and a very polished look. And that, my friends, will wrap up this video very nicely. Anyway, leave a like, tell me what you think, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching, and a big thank you to my 8,800 subscribers. Okay, bye.